Hi, I'm Abby. I studied linguistics, anthropology, and museum studies at the University of Texas, and I'm passionate about education, and I think that academic research should be readily accessible to anyone and everyone. I want to use this channel to break down academic articles that are interesting to me and hopefully make them a little more accessible by explaining the terms, jargon, and concepts within them. People always talk about real comedy as subverting expectations, but what exactly are those expectations? Today we're going to talk about that as we explore the concepts in this paper on linguistics and humor by Salvatore Artardo called The Violation of Grice's Maxims in Jokes. So before reading and deciphering the abstract with you, I'm going to go over the set of assumptions that the paper plays off of. These are Grice's maxims, which are basically just four general expectations for a cooperative conversation. If you flout or dismiss any of these maxims in conversation, then you are being uncooperative. Here are Grice's maxims. The maxim of quantity, where one tries to be as informative as one possibly can and give as much information as is needed, but no more. The maxim of quality, where one tries to be truthful and does not give information that is false or is not supported by evidence. The maxim of relation, where one tries to be relevant and says things that are pertinent to the discussion. And the maxim of manner, where one tries to be as clear as brief and as orderly as one can in what one says, and you avoid obscurity and ambiguity. I think it's so cool that we intuitively do this and notice when other people are breaking the rules by, say, lying, being sarcastic, or telling a joke. Speaking of jokes, here's the paper's abstract. The principal claim of this paper is that the study of jokes and other kinds of humorous texts can yield interesting insights on the nature of cooperative linguistic communication, and more specifically, on the relative status of maxims. It is also claimed that these insights would be difficult to achieve without taking humor research into account. A basic assumption which underlies the following remarks is that a large number of jokes involve violations of one or more of Grice's maxims. I'm going to read the four examples of jokes that they give that violate each of the maxims and then on the screen say why they're breaking the rules of the maxim. So for quantity, which is to be informative, the joke is, excuse me, do you know what time it is? Then for quality, which is to be truthful, why did the president fly to Panama? Because the fighting is over. Then for relation, which is to be relevant, how many surrealists does it take to screw in a light bulb? Fish. And then for manner, which is to be clear, do you believe in clubs for young men? Only when kindness fails. Jokes like these completely violate the maxims of conversation and are therefore uncooperative. Yet, Artardo goes on to explain that we still make sense of jokes. We do this mainly because we expect that the other party is being cooperative, so we will make intuitive leaps to make what they are saying make sense. So how do we do this? What kind of leaps are necessary? Artardo explains the unique nature of jokes and how they have a specific linguistic purpose and format. He breaks the article into three parts, the communicative status of humorous texts, the importance of the implicit in jokes, and the relative position of the maxims. The first section of the article explains how jokes are a rigged sort of communication, and so they have their own set of expectations entirely. The article outlines this new set of maxims for a non bona fide mode of conversation. So for jokes, the new maxims are the maxim of quantity, give exactly as much information as is necessary for the joke, the maxim of quality, say only what is compatible with the world of the joke, the maxim of relation, say only what is relevant to the joke, and the maxim of manner, tell the joke efficiently. Artardo explains that upon hearing a joke, the hearer will backtrack after realizing they have been misled and will reinterpret the information provided on the basis of these humor maxims. Moving on to the importance of the implicit in jokes, the article states what we all already know, that if you explain the punchline of a joke, it is no longer funny. So, the article states that in telling a joke, you're asking the other party to infer some of the implicit, to connect the dots and complete a cognitive task in order to understand the joke. 
and then hopefully they'll respond by laughing. Implicitness is directly related to the maxim of quantity. Give exactly as much information as is needed for the joke, but no more. And then the other necessary part of telling a joke is that the punchline is unexpected, which correlates to the maxim of manner to tell a joke efficiently. That bleeds into the final part of the paper, which is the relative position of maxims. The author cites another study where upon analyzing 243 jokes, they found that all 243 jokes violated the maxim of relevance, while only some violated other maxims as well, suggesting that when any of the three maxims is violated in a joke, the maxim of relevance is necessarily violated as well. So be cooperative, unless you're telling a joke, because in that case you're irrelevant. Thanks for tuning in.